QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Income and Expense Graph. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks desktop sample rock castle construction practice file provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process we do every time maximize on the home page to the gray area view drop down noting we got the hide icon bar open windows list open open windows on the left hand side we got the reports drop down company and financial looking at the p and the l the profit and the loss ranging to the change in from 01 01 24 to 12 31 24 january to december 2024 customize that report with the fonts and the numbers so we can change those fonts on up to 12 okay yes okay reports drop down one more time for the other major financial statement report the balance sheet so we could change the range to the fiscal year 12 31 2, 4. customize it on the fonts the numbers the 12 the okay yes and okay you did that way too fast i know it's because we do it every time that's what we do every time these are the major two fin financial statement reports all other reports pretty much giving some more information upon one or multiple major line items on these two reports we have here this time we're going to be taking a look at some graphs that will be supporting the data on the profit and loss those are going to be the income and expense graphs so i'm going to uh, collapse some of this stuff here so I can see my income and the cost of goods sold and the expenses. So there's our major income statement categorization. Let's go to the reports up top and we're going to go down to the company and financial. We can find this graph down here, income and expense graph, or we could go into the report center and find it there too. Let's do that as well. The report center up top maximizing to the gray area i just scroll on down till i see a graph i'm in the company and financial spot by the way and so we're going to see where's a nice pretty graph there there's one look at that it's beautiful let's open it up and check it out shall we let's first change the date range up top so we got the dates let's make this from 010124 to 123124 to be matching our uh, income statement report this is going to give us supplemental added information on some line items on the income statement so as we saw with some other graphs what we kind of like to do is be able to say okay i could use this graph i could add this graph to say my year end or month end summary reports to my supervisor or possibly to a bookkeeper or something like that i would also like to make sure i know where the numbers come from so i can at least explain what is going on with the graphs and then i might want to consider being able to use the subsidiary reports or any reports that the data is being pulled from to make these kind of graphs in excel now this one has a little bit more options so there's there's a couple different options we can play with so let's bear with me as we go through them we got two items down below which are income and expenses those being the two main categories of the income statement income minus expenses being the net income so and then up top we've got by account by customer by class so if i'm on by account and i'm on the income side of things that's going to be listing out over here our income accounts if we're on the expense side of things and we're in by account then it's going to give us our expense accounts on the right hand side if we go to buy customers up top that doesn't really make sense for the expense side of things because customers are not who we typically sell to right so it's going to be the income side of things broken out by customer then and then we've got buy class which would only be applicable if we've got class tracking turned on which is kind of a specialty type of area all right let's go through those again we're going to go to buy account we're going to go to the income side of things 
Here's the income. It comes down to 455, 130, 36. If I go to the income statement, then uh, where's my income statement? Profit and loss. Then we're at on the income up top, 454, 657, 14. So note, like with the sub ledgers that we took a look at, uh, if we don't use, it's possible for our income to be different than the sub ledger, more so than some other sub ledgers. For example, the accounts receivable will typically always tie out to the receivable by customer reports because QuickBooks kind of forces us to do that. Remember that if when we enter data into the system, in the homepage, if I don't enter my income with an invoice and the sales receipt, then it can throw off my sub ledger reports and it can throw off these graph reports. So just keep that in mind. If there's a difference, that's probably where it's coming from. Possibly you entered something into income with a deposit form or had a journal entry uh, or something like that. All right, so if we go back to the income statement, then we've got our income accounts, noting that the income accounts will typically be not as many. There's more income accounts here than you might see in many companies because of the nature of this being a job cost construction type of company. But typically we have a limited amount of income, possibly an income line item, say for the things we sell like inventory sales line item for income and possibly services line item for income. And then everything else we're gonna break out in the sub reports if we're doing a full service kind of accounting system. In other words, we resist the urge to break things out on the income statement by customer. We don't want income statements per customer. We don't typically want income statement per item, inventory item or service item. Maybe the groups of the large groups of items on the income statement, because again, we can get that detail on the sub ledger. So usually if you're breaking this report out by, by income account, you usually don't have that many of them. It might not be the most relevant report, but it could be a, a nice report. So then you've got your percentages over here. Obviously the main income account by account is going to be the construction income. So that makes sense. So I think it's, it's also just taking the parent accounts. So if I go back on over here, then we're taking the, the bar, the income, barter income, construction income, reimbursement uh, income. And it looks like it's taking possibly other income down below these being the other income categories that aren't part of our normal kind of major business uh, character uh, major business setting items that's why they're down here in the other section so if you wanted to do this on your own and make your own pie chart based on account wouldn't be too difficult to do usually you could just basically type these numbers into excel for example however for your income line items which could actually then tie out to what is on your income statement and then just highlight those sales and make a pie chart, which will give you a lot more flexibility if you wanted to do it that way. So if I go back on over and then we say, okay, there's the income by account. Let's go to the expenses by account. So that adds up to the 3359.7572. If I go back to the profit and loss and check that out, that's gonna be here because we have cost of goods sold, which kind of confuses things. That's a major expense. So that's the cost of us selling inventories, 18024. 124.19 plus the other expenses 155851.53 gives us the 335975 so if i go back here then there, that ties out exactly there so there's our expense accounts broken out so once again on the expense side of things this could be a more useful kind of grouping for the charts because typically we're going to have more types of expenses. And I think, again, that they're, they're using the parent accounts instead of the sub accounts. So I don't think they have fuel insurance, just the automobile here. So let's just check that out. So here we've got job insurance automobile. Yeah, I think they're just taking the parent uh, accounts and, and not the sub accounts. So, but if we go to the profit and loss, there's gonna be a lot more categories for the expenses even though remember we're not listing the expenses out by who we paid we're not saying for the automobile that we paid you know mobile gas or anything like that we're saying it's going to go into automobile or possibly more generally the fuel what we used it for in these categories but because of course 
in a business, we're concentrating on one thing that we do for other people. And, and we only concentrate on one thing. We specialize or something or a few things. And then everything else we're gonna, we're going to pay for, right? So that's why there's gonna be different cat, much more categorizations of expenses that we're paying for in order to keep the business in motion. So a pie chart based on the expense categories could be good, or we can have the sub ledger categories for the expenses in a similar way we had with the income, breaking out the outflow, the expenses by who we paid by vendor, uh, for example. So let's go back on over and say, I keep toggling to the wrong one, get to the right one. So that's that one. And then we've got the customers up top. And, and obviously just to, if we wanted to create this yourself, then you can export the profit and loss, or you can export the trial balance uh, could work as well. And then you just trim down just the expense categories. And you could do it like they're doing here, where you're just using the parent accounts. Maybe you want to see all accounts in the pie chart, however. So then you can you can filter out in Excel the all the all the accounts instead of just the parent accounts, which means you'd have to delete all the subtotals and so on. And, and once you have that listed, you can sum up the total, which should sum up to the same total here, and then just highlight it, you know, order it from top greatest to least, and then highlight it and make a pie chart. And again, you have a lot more flexibility to do that because then you could group this, you can group the top 10, you can group the top seven accounts, put all the other stuff in other, like we did before. We won't do this again in Excel, but just note, you can do it in Excel fairly easily and you have a lot more flexibility uh, if you were to do it in Excel. All right, so let's go back on over. Wrong one, wrong one for crying out loud. Get it right, customer center. So on the customers, this only works on the income side of things. So now we're breaking this out by customer, which I believe we saw in another report uh, already. So we're trying to get those income items that are broken out by customer with this one. So I think we have another graph that actually focuses in on that already. And then we got by class here, if you got the class tracking turned on. Now up top, you've got this kind of comparative graph uh, that is, is comparing the income and expenses. This is something also that you could basically try to do and you could do in Excel. It's a little, little bit more complex because now you got two things going on in the same graph, but not too, too difficult to do. You can go into the income statement you can export the profit and loss or possibly export a trial balance, which doesn't have all of uh, the subtotals. And then you could you could sum up the income items and then you could sum up the expense items. And then you could basically create a chart with both of those bars on you know the same chart and, and construct something that that looks like this has a, a side by side kind of comparative type of chart. This one's broken out by month. That could be a little bit more, you know, detailed to get into. You have to determine how are you going to be doing that. You could look, you could research that in Excel. We won't get into Excel to, to jump into that. But again, something that's totally doable in Excel. And if you were to do it in Excel, you can make the pie charts different colors. You can not have this this uh, this 3d kind of thing and and so on you can have different formats of the bar charts as well you can adjust the x and y axes as as you see fit if you were to do these kinds of things in excel it also really helps your excel skills and it helps you to be able to explain what the chart is doing because remember people have a tendency to put these nice charts in to reports uh, and especially in a presentation, you would like and be, want to be ready for a question saying, well, what does that chart mean? <laughs> and so that you can, you can uh, answer those questions.